Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Do you know the one thing that could ruin your peace of mind during a financial emergency? Not knowing if your money is actually safe. So today I want to talk about money market funds, which is where many of us and many retirees, my mom included, choose to keep our emergency savings. So are they really as safe as they seem? When it comes to cash reserves and an emergency fund, the goal is to make sure that money is there when you need it, no matter what is happening in your life and no matter what is happening in the economy. And when we talk about where to put your cash reserves or your emergency fund, we talk about putting it in a very safe place. This might be a high yield savings account, a CD, T-bills, and yes, money market funds. For so many of us, there's really a feeling of safety and security tied to an emergency fund and knowing that money is there and you can access it whenever you need it. And I feel like that's even more paramount in retirement when you step away from the workforce and step away from that paycheck. There are already so many variables that come with a retirement that you don't want one of those variables to be, will this money be there when I need it? Now you probably have a really great idea of what a savings account is and what CDs are and maybe you know what T-bills are and perhaps how they work, but if you happen to have any questions on T-bills, I do have a video going over everything you could possibly want to know about them that I will link here and down below if you're interested in checking it out. But when it comes to money market funds, they're a little bit less ubiquitous. They come across as having some of those elements of a cash-like account, but then they also have a share price and an expense ratio, and this looks and feels a little bit more like an investment. Let's first break down exactly what a money market fund is. A money market fund is a type of investment fund that pools money from many investors to buy very short term, low risk investments. These funds are designed to provide safety, easy access to your money and a small amount of income. Now I know using the term investment fund when talking about a place to keep your cash might be a little bit nerve wracking for some people and it might give them a moment of pause, but you really can treat money market funds like cash accounts, but technically it is more appropriate to refer to them as an investment. Money market funds invest in a range of low risk financial instruments. T-bills, which are short-term government securities considered virtually risk-free and fully backed by the federal government. Then we have government obligations, which are going to be longer-term debt obligations, things like notes and bonds, again, fully backed by the U.S. federal government and considered very minimal risk. Then we might also see repurchase agreements, which are very short-term loans with financial institutions like banks. Again, these are very low risk. And some money market funds, not all, do also have commercial paper, which is a short-term loan with highly reputable, highly financially secure companies. Again, these are considered to be very low risk, but not all money market funds use these. The whole goal of a money market fund is to keep money safe, to maintain a stable value of $1 per share and to pay market interest rates based on conservative investments. They generally pay out their interest earned in the form of a dividend and you can buy or sell these at any time. So they are highly liquid. This money is accessible whenever you need it. The target share price for most money market funds is $1 per share because the goal is to make these funds feel like a safe, stable place to park money, similar to a savings account. When you invest in a money market fund, the idea is that your initial investment stays the same. Keeping the price stable at $1 per share keeps it simple. For every dollar you put in, you get one share. When a money market fund maintains the stable price of $1 per share, when you earn interest income, it's not from an increase in price. It's an interest income paid out in the form of a dividend on the shares. Now, most investors will choose to reinvest this dividend income, which means buying more shares. So if you invest $10,000 into a money market fund and it has an annual yield of 4%, that $400 could be paid out to you as cash or reinvested and used to purchase more shares. That would still be at a share price of $1. So you would accumulate 400 more shares and would now have $10,400 invested. Now, one of the biggest questions here is, does that $1 price ever change? For instance, could there be situations where this $1 share price actually increased to say $1.10 or could it fall to say 90 cents, at which point you would actually lose money in a money market fund? The answer is rarely, but it's possible. If the fund's investments were to lose value and the share price deviated and say fell below a dollar, this would be referred to as breaking the buck. 
It is very important to emphasize that this is very uncommon, especially for money market funds that are solely utilizing government-backed securities, as these are essentially risk-free investments in and of themselves. I am going to say this one more time at the risk of repeating myself and sounding like a broken record, but it is very important to me that this point gets across. Money market funds work very hard to maintain that stable share price of $1 per share, making them a very safe and secure place to keep your excess cash. Now, with that being said, there are three situations in which it might be possible that a fund could break the buck. The 2008 financial crisis is a prime example. When Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy, the Reserve Primary Fund, one of the oldest money market funds, was heavily exposed to Lehman debt. This exposure forced the fund's share price to fall to 97 cents per share, sparking a broader panic as investors rushed to withdraw their money from other funds. This event highlighted that although rare, money market funds are not immune to losses, especially in unprecedented market conditions. Now, this was a very extreme situation, and in this situation, this fund was eventually liquidated with investors receiving 0.991 cents per share rather than a dollar, or 99 cents and a tenth of a cent per share. So just a kiss under a dollar, so the losses were very minimal. In response to past instances like this, regulations have tightened. Today, money market funds are subject to stricter liquidity and quality requirements and they are required to maintain full transparency, helped by the fact that they now have to report daily as well as weekly liquidity levels to reduce the risk of this ever happening again. Another situation might be sudden and extreme interest rate changes. If current market rates were say 2% and then suddenly rose to say 4%, if that were to happen, suddenly this money market fund would be holding a great deal of government debt at a lower rate, at less attractive rate than bonds that are being issued at the newer rate. So that would make them less favorable to investors because of their lesser interest rate. Now, of course, the money market fund would adjust their holdings, but this adjustment might take a little bit of time. So this fund could experience a temporary price fluctuation. A fluctuation could also happen for money market funds that are investing in commercial paper. Remember that corporate debt is not backed by the federal government, so inherently it is a bit riskier. And if this company were to experience a downgrade, the value of their commercial paper would be downgraded as well. It would become less valuable. Keep in mind though, that these downgrades or defaults are very uncommon and not all money markets expose themselves to commercial notes or commercial paper. For instance, the Vanguard Money Market Fund does not have any exposure to commercial paper. So what's the takeaway? What's the overall risk of a money market fund compared to other cash-like accounts? Well, I would phrase it like this. They are just a touch riskier than something like a CD or a savings account, which is going to be backed by the FDIC, or a T-bill, which is backed by the US federal government. Brokerage houses that offer money market funds have a huge incentive to keep their share price stable at $1 and work incredibly hard to do so but there is no federal backing to these funds. Also important to note that just like a savings account, their interest rate is subject to market change. If you're looking to lock in an interest rate over a set period of time, you would be better set utilizing something like a T-bill or a CD. But when you utilize one of these options, you do lose a bit of liquidity. At this moment, you might be asking yourself, why would you even choose to use a money market fund over something like, say, a high-yield savings account? Well, traditionally, money market funds tend to pay slightly higher interest rates than, say, high-yield savings accounts, so they can be a really good option and they maintain liquidity. Also, for a lot of people, they like to keep their accounts all in one place, so it can make sense to keep your emergency fund in a money market fund if you already have investments with this brokerage house. Makes your life a little bit simpler if you're not having to deal with more institutions than necessary. My takeaway that I hope to share is that if I had to rate a money market fund, I would rate it as super safe. I think that's a technical term and I'm pretty comfortable using it. So if you wanna put your cash or your emergency fund in a money market fund, I think it's safe to assume the share price is likely not to deviate from a dollar. It is likely that you will capture the market rate over time and you will have access to this money whenever you need it. They are safe enough that I put the emergency fund of my 73 year old mom into a money market fund and that's pretty much the highest safety rating I could give anything. What are your thoughts on a money market fund? 
fund. Do you use one? Put your thoughts in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.